We're always in our clubhouse getting high. Superfuckers! Everybody wishes we would die. Superfuckers! Here we come, like a bomb. Everybody fucking run and hide. Hey, it's the Pizza Party Podcast. Who are you, people? I'm Pan Pizza. Oh, okay, well. If you're gonna if you're gonna be like that, <laughs> I'm Nolan. Oh hey, it's Jim. Wait, are we supposed to say it's it's the Rebel Taxi? Shit, pizza it's the party Rebel pod- Taxi Pizza Party podcast. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a few people who did discover this podcast first instead of my videos, so you know it's, it's getting new pe- new audiences. You know, oh it's cool. awesome. Yeah. Oh, and I'm Stev. Yeah, Stev is back after like four weeks of being gone forever. You thought Stev was kill, but no. no. He is back. We're all kill and stronger than ever. I am Death Gun. I'm the I'm the bad guy from Sword Art Online. Death Gun season two. That, that, that's a re, that's his real name, Death Gun. Yes. <laughs> they, oh, is it? Shit. They named um, the bad guy Death Gun in Sword Art Online season two. Death <laughs> Gun. I'm gonna kill you. Probably. Actual line. It's like '90s badass. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it sounds like a '90s parody, if anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the next video is either gonna be cell damage, a review of a video game. It's like Twisted Metal, but with cartoon characters. Ooh. Or or top ten worst reboots, and you know which one's gonna be on there, right? You know what just came out? What shitty reboot just fucking came out? Uh, oh, I, I know this one. Hold on. Uh, um, uh, Transformers? Oh. No. Oh. Uh, is it Fuller House? You're doing Fuller House. Full House always sucked. Well, top ten at worst animated reboots. Okay, that's true because you would have to be good at once to be <laughs> a bad reboot. It's uh, in a way not a change in quality. So. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to mention Dexter's Lab again because you're a fucking hack? That's not. A, that's not necessarily. A, <laughs> wait, that's a more of a revival because it disappeared and came back like few years later whatever helps you sleep at night big man the dexter's labs the the seasons three and four i mean the art style was crap but the episodes were still good even though they kind of changed some things around wasn't ride my hog or ride that hog like season three yeah (laughs) i like that one i like that a lot ride that hog that and also the uh dad versus dad episodes (laughs) the one where dexter's uh dad and his and mandark's hippie dad clash forces (laughs) And they just 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 dis- want to destroy each other at the park, and it gets to the point where they're, they're just picking up ducks and throwing them at each other. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's, it's it was a great episode. I honestly don't remember much about Dexter's Lab because I honestly didn't watch it. I, I really liked Ego Trip. Oh yeah, the movie. Which I, there's no DVD of it, sadly. No iTunes <sighs> rips. Nothing. Is it? Is it on VHS? VHS. Yeah, that's the only way to watch it. But it was when uh, Dexter goes back in time. No, it goes into the future, sees how cool he is in the future, and you realize, wow, I fucking suck. And he gets uh, four versions of himself from different time periods, and he, they fight De- uh, Mandark, who has taken over the world, and it just ends on this big, giant robot battle. And it was, like, the coolest shit ever. Well, the the the, the adult, like, the uh, middle-aged Dexter was pretty badass. Yeah. And bald, but he had a beard. Yeah, but what I love about <laughs> that uh, Ego Trip episode is, like, the final battle, like, they had this big montage to create the robot that they were going to fight with, and it's just the robot trying to survive all of Mandark's uh, robots and obstacle courses and stuff, and it's just slowly getting destroyed one by one, and I don't know, I thought, I thought that was such a satisfying... Uh, I guess, ending to the series, but then they made a new seasons. Yeah, but it was definitely designed to be the series finale, yeah. right? Like, I remember them, like, there was, like, a big hurrah, and mm-hmm. it worked. It hyped people up. It made people want another season. Yeah, either that or uh, the other episode with um, where De- Dexter goes to Japan, and he releases a giant ro- a gi- giant monster, which looks like a Godzilla monster. The one that has, like, an axe for a face. <laughs> I it's straight that. up a ripoff of an existing Godzilla monster. Does anyone remember this? I do. I do. Oh, yeah. That was the only Not Dexter sure. episode that was a full half hour. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but he, the thing is, it's he he's an exchange student and goes to Japan, and Japan is the most stereotypical. Everybody has giant robots. The teacher looks has, like, always a kawaii anime face going. <laughs> it's just so, I don't know. 
Like, if it, if a character goes to Japan, it's always the most weeaboo trash ever, like Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, in that movie, they fight uh, Godzilla. Like, they, the first five minutes of that movie, they fight a Godzilla ripoff when they go to Japan. But yeah, you, you guys want to get. I, I love. I like how they handled uh, Tokyo very tastefully in, yeah. in that movie. Uh. I mean, there's people who say like this would be the equivalent of a of a character co- going to America and fighting cowboys and crips and bloods and such. But but honest, to be honest, I'd I'd kind of appreciate a movie like that. Yeah. Because yeah. I because I love American stereotypes and like foreign properties so much. Oh yeah. Like there are tons of uh there are tons of anime, um that I mean there are, well, not tons there are a few anime that have like over the top American <laughs> stereotypes and it's just like yes this is me this is who I am I have never felt more properly presented before. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the newest uh, Japanese Power Ranger or one of the new ones I think they're ninjas or something but the six ranger is American like uh, American Ranger and he his morpher is a as a hamburger. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. This is the oh. thing like and he has a cowboy hat like uh, oh. <laughs> is it like a, it's a, a is it a bacon cheeseburger? And does he go like, like, go America? And then he becomes. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I have, there's a restaurant right down the street called Cookout. And it's super good. And every time I'm there, I always get a bacon cheeseburger. It's li- I'm literally perpetuating the, my own stereotypes. <laughs> but this, it's so good. And I mean, it's not your fault you have to wear a cowboy hat when you go in there. That's I'm wearing a cowboy hat stuff. right now. You are? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you like you look good in a cowboy hat. That's you not. Know, you know those. You know those pajama pants that uh, the guy that the karate teacher wore in Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Yeah. Guess who's yeah. wearing them right now? Oh, I'm, I'm linking you guys Whoa. right now. Check check out this ranger. Okay. What, okay. What, but look how amazing that is. What t-shirt are you wearing? Oh, let me see. Hold on. It says, um, destroy all infidels. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this and is... I, and, and if you pull up your shirt, and if you... I pull, I'm pulling up my shirt right now, and I see a giant Nazi tattoo. I'm 100% American. Uh, I don't know about that. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> This the cheeseburger thing looks like. Did you ever remember those McDonald's Transformer toys? Yes. That were, that were, oh, okay. That were cheeseburgers and egg McMuffins and no, stuff. That's what it looks like. But you don't understand this guy from like f- the face front profile. It looks like he's wearing a cowboy hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. He looks like he could be like a cop, like the, the cop cowboy hats. You know, the smaller the, ones. A sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I guess that would be more accurate. Sorry. Yeah, good, one of good, those. Good going, you dingus. Mm-hmm. But it's ninja themed. The, the, the season's ninja themed, and they have a fucking cowboy ranger. Ninja cowboy. I, that's a good when they, Yeah, when they localize it, I hope they get like a very stereotypical uh, um, a southerner teenager or something. Oh, the, the, the cowboy from Zap Michelle and Showdown. Oh, like, uh, Clay. Yeah, like Clay. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't bring Clay into this. He was adorable. How but you just get, get along, but, little doggy. Get along. He fucks his sister. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Oh, Pan, don't don't act like you're so shocked. You fuck Emily all Shut the time. Shut the fuck up. That's not true, <laughs> asshole. You know, if they do this for an American audience. I think Guy Ferrari would be the perfect choice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, no, imagine imagine the geriatric Power Rangers like uh, hand gestures while he's going, "Hey, America, it's me, Guy Ferrari, and this time, welcome to your beatdown." Oh no! And I was wonder- and he does that slow motion flip and kicks him. Yeah. <laughs> How does he get those sh- shirts? Like, I never see because he has so many. I always wonder, like, does he special order them? Or is there, like, a store he goes to to get those, like, dress shirts with flames on them? Isn't that a stereotypical, like, nerd, like, nerd shirt? Like, my friend, I know a few people who um, have owned those shirts. Like, one of my friends' avatar, he draws himself with that shirt, and I'm like, don't, no, stop, please. Where do they, where do they get them, or is... Is it like one of those things? I'll, like, I'll ask him. I'll ask him where I, he, I, he. If I remember, he might have gotten it as a gift, but he might have bought it. So I'll see. Maybe, maybe you have to be like you have to be a certain amount of a dork 
<laughs> and you, that store just appears to you in the mall. But like, if you're not that percentage of dork, like you wouldn't see it in the mall at all. It's like that Halloween shop in the haunting hour. <laughs> yeah, it appeared to I Emily mean, Osment because she's uber edgy and dark, oh. and she wanted to scare everyone. Oh wait, that haunting hour is that the one with, where Tom Kenny's the villain? No, that's no, that's um, no, that's um, what the, what's that guy who plays Jake Saw? Tobin Bell. I don't know who that is. He, he he he's the guy with the long hair, and he's like, "Hello, I'm not a pedophile. Would you like to buy my book? It's five dollars." What are you talking about? What was this person? The Haunting Hour. Don't think about I, it. I know it was. I don't know. But wait, I wait, remember wait. the Haunting Hour where they're just like the, the main character is like this edgy goth girl, and then she gets yeah. That was the, that's the same one. Yeah, and it, it has to, Tobin Bell's the villain, not Tom Kenny. You idiot. I remember there was one where Tom Kenny was the villain, and it was just him in live action, and it's like yeah. there was a Haunting Hour show. You're probably thinking about that. I don't know. Yeah, but I know there are like anthologies, like different actors for each episode. But um, I found it really funny that the goth girl gets bullied, and the first the first thing she does when she gets home is she just lies in bed and has her like 2004 iPod and listens to like some generic stock emo band, <laughs> and it's a montage of her just looking sad while she flashbacks to all all the bullying. It's like, oh no. And then her brother, then her brother ruins the moon. And he's like, guys, guys, look at my fucking pirate costume. And, he, and, he, and it's like, dude, you're fucking like eight. Shut the fuck Shut up. Shut up, dweeb. Trying to be emo for Sasuke. So wait, are you? You're Emily's older brother. I don't fucking know anymore. Sure. Uh, do, does do you got? Does she have a younger brother where she's like, oh my god, get the fuck out. Ow. Stop. Fuck, we need to... Well, I was watching Clone High, which I'm going to review soon, but there's this character called Skunky Poo, and I'm thinking, that should be, like, Emily's even worst equivalent, Skunky Poo. Have you ever watched Clone High? Fucking love it. That's a great show. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, basically, there's a skunk that goes, Try and catch me, bitch! And I'm thinking, that's who Emily's, like, evil half should be. Well... There's Stephanie, but that Stephanie's innocent. <laughs> this one should be way worse. Oh, you can't be, bitch. Yeah. So you guys want to get into the news? Let's do it. Okay. This is CNN. Powerpuff Girls. You want to talk about Powerpuff Girls since it premiered, and I'm going to do a big-ass analysis video on every single thing that went fucking wrong. Uh, sure. Um, I, I could, I have a few things to say, but I'll let somebody else go first. Mm-hmm. Who wants so to whoever, go first? Whoever, whoever, Somebody whoever. else? Oh, is it? Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess, Jim, I, I guess Jim, you, by default. Well, I mean, I've only seen two episodes. I didn't watch. Okay. There's six that have aired, I believe. But I've seen three. Oh, okay. So you're the, if you're the expert, if you want to no, go ahead. It sucks. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, <laughs> It's it reminded me of Teen Titans Go, no, but like no, it like worse than Teen Titans. Like yeah. the animation, like it looked. I, I just the thing I didn't get about it was like the original had like really good stories and really good animation, and it was more about the girls going on these adventures as superheroes. And this feels like less about that and more about the girls themselves, yeah. which I don't think I'm as into personally. And, and I just, I don't know. It was like pretty hard to get through those two. It was like a pretty big fuck up. But that it like looked like the t- I like stopped watching Teen Titans Go a while ago, and it, that it reminded me of that. I just didn't think. I mean, I, I think Teen Titans Go is more experimental than yeah. Powerpuff Girls, but it's like that bland kind of char- the character it, design reminded me of that. And by experimental, you mean more just they they just do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, yeah Teen Titans Go yeah. was just like completely out there and fucking insane. But like T- Powerpuff Girls 2016 is just like, hey, here's this joke you've already heard in this other thing. Here's a joke you've heard from this other show, this other current show, and here's like yeah. stuff like Yas or. Uh, I can't even or for for icons. some it, it feels like an an holy mal- amalgamation of like misplaced like uh oh god what's the word I'm looking for mis misplaced like creative um energy and like and then a mix of like corporate mandates and all this other shit and it's like you I've read some interviews and they were like we we want to um 
we want to like um, do Powerpuff Girls differently because we want to do it more character driven. We want to give the girls personalities and stuff. And it's like, but you really didn't. No, <laughs> well, it's, it's a misunderstanding <laughs> of the characters because it's, it's like just, it's just misunderstanding of the appeal in general. Because Powerpuff yeah. Girls was like it's a it's a comedy superhero show. You you got action, you got like comedy, and it was like, but it was about these three little girls, and it was just like, oh, they're cute, but they can also like do all this crazy shit. And this this one is just like, oh, here here's um here's the girls, and they're doing these this quirky shit, and it's not. It doesn't understand at all. It's just like it feels like the um they have to like have them be superheroes just because they were originally superheroes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, I mean the episodes don't really have any time for any crime fighting. Like one episode, uh, they they shove like three different plot lines together. Like they have an episode. I mean, the one episode just has Buttercup joining a gang, this roller derby gang, which is just like the original series when they had. Buttercup joined the gang, Green Gang. Yeah. I mean, this was done so much worse. Yeah, they also have, like, Princess Morbucks trying to be a Powerpuff Girl, and then they have this other monster who's destroying the city, and it's like, you, you don't get any time for any of them enough. It, it just feels shallow. It was too many things at once, because the ones that everybody loves were just simple, like, like the one we talked about in the Powerpuff Girls podcast we did forever ago, where, like, they you know, they race and they go into the future, right? Mm -hmm. That's like, that's the whole episode. That's like that plot. And they explore like each, each of the characters who are affected by it. And this show couldn't ever do that. And I think it's like, like, I just don't understand why you wouldn't want to stay to these like kind of just more simple episode ideas because that works a lot better in 11 minutes, like with like regular show as well, you know? Okay. So the big issue with the, this new series is that it, it assumes you've watched the original, which is the worst idea you could do for a reboot, even if it is a soft reboot. Um, because like, you know, princess Morbox doesn't really have any motivation yet. Like, no. or, or nothing's set up. We don't know what status quo is, at least out of the three episodes I saw. And, uh, and it's, it's just like, like, Professor being in love with pickles, they they like he's attacking monsters with pickles in the first episode, and it's like why they, you know we haven't established that he loves pickles yet. Oh yeah, the mayor. Yeah, the yeah, mayor. Also, what I say? You said the <laughs> professor. <laughs> professor, sorry, sorry, the mayor. I, yeah, yeah. This is also a, I think a, another trend. Like I was gonna say that it feels a lot like this. This very much does feel like a modern like version of the Powerpuff Girls, but all the negative aspects of modern cartoons. Yeah, it's the Yo Yogi like, of of, of, a, of yeah. today's cartoons. Yeah, but definitely. it all, but it also reminded me how much I hate like opening episodes of shows now. Like the very first episode, where it's like, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go into gaming terms for a sec because it kind of it helps me establish my point, but. Basically, in in some games, like there's something called a vertical slice, which was coined by some dude. Forget the name, but basically, it's just like every, it encompasses everything about the game in that in like a single level, and it's just meant to like show people what how your game will work and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that like people miss first episodes to do that, like especially in a show where there's like you could um, just set up like. Oh, the prof you could set up the gr the girls and the professor their dynamics, and then they could set you could set up their dynamics and stuff and introduce them. But they don't really do that. The first episode, the first like the very first episode is uh, the g girls get con um, Bubbles wins two concert tickets, and she has to decide who she wants to take. And then they get called, and it's like oh the mayor's in trouble, and it feels like this is an episode that like would be in the middle of the series mm -hmm. rather than an opening for the show, especially if you're doing a reboot. Yeah. So it's like that. It, it, I just it, and this it, this was also this has also happened in other shows like Adventure Time didn't really establish anything in the first episode. I don't think regular show did. And like that's just kind of like no. how modern cartoons are now. And I just wish that they'd kind of like try to make more in attempts to make the first episode more memorable or get an episode to get everyone on your side, because this show certainly didn't win me over at oh, all. Yeah. But mm -hmm. regu regular show, actually, the pilot did but then they aired it later oh cool. well okay great <laughs> sorry uh, the original sorry. powerpuff girls at least had in the intro the backstory like set up the universe yeah with, with the creation so there wasn't really necessary to have a first episode because even the original you know like and they had one but like they didn't have to like set up the status quo because the intro did it here we have you know a very well animated the only time this series has been that this 2006 series has been well animated is the intro and it looks awesome but 
there's no setup. But it's outsourced. Yeah, yeah well, of course. <laughs> and um, and like you know, we we don't know how the technically. If if this is your first time watching the series, you don't know how the Power Bros came to be. We don't know why they don't have fingers, and we don't know why they're superheroes. You know, like it's just we we don't know if bad guys attack every day. Things like that, but in the original one, it sets it up. They were created by this and Monsters Attack. Yeah, the intro doesn't have any sort of like sugar spice. It doesn't have that. It doesn't have the city of Townsville, and it's only some episodes end on. So the day is saved. It's just like you don't really get anything. Yeah, it it it, it doesn't know what if it wants to be going full on reboot and just make its own like Powerpuff Girls, which it probably should have. Or if it wants to just be, recreate the uh, kind of like energy and the uh, pacing of the original. And then it just fails at both because it doesn't fuck. Like you said, nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, it's just it's just a, it has nothing to offer other than like, hey, look, we got twerking in an episode and we have the word. Yes, it's modern. Look how current we are. Apparently, one of the episodes is uh, they call it the Stay Over, and it's a giant hangover parody. I have not seen it yet, but apparently, it's really good, according to my friend Jake. Yeah. Is it good? Has anyone seen it? I haven't seen that one. No, it, it probably sucks, and your friend's probably a liar. <laughs> it's accurate. That, that, that wouldn't be too far from the truth. Oh, oh. Damn it, Jake. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Jake. Everybody in the comments type, fuck you, Jake. Wait, is it. <laughs> Is it Jake from State Farm? No. Shut no. God damn it. <laughs> what? Sorry. Just Jake. His name's just Jake. What are, you, what are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Khakis. She sounds hideous. No, stop. <laughs> well, no. Hey, guy, Hey guys. We jumped the shark. We quoted a fucking Allstate commercial. <laughs> it's State Farm. Now this video is going to be aged. Who cares if it's aged? This podcast is garbage. Yeah, who gives a shit? But Powerpuff Girls is going to age like freaking... Bread. Powerpuff Girls is going to age like milk. Yeah, why couldn't they age so they'd be hotter? Wait, what? Speaking what? of that, who hey. wants to fuck a bunch of little girls? The, hey, let's go to the news. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sarah Bellum's gone. Oh, yeah, they, oh, they, they, yeah. they took out Sarah Bellum. And in, in like this LA Times uh, interview, they said, yeah, Sarah Bellum doesn't represent the message that we want to uphold. So we had her taken out. Wait, who's that? Sarah Bellum, you know, the mayor's assistant, the one you never see the face to. Oh, why did they get rid of her? Sarah Bellum? Cerebrum? We don't, no, I get... We, we the, don't, the no, I'm behind. sorry. I thought... Okay. I just I thought, got the joke! Well, Nobody apparently, knows. they created this character that's super sexy, but you don't see her face. And the whole joke was, you don't see the sexiest part of a woman, which is her brain, according to Greg McCracken. And, um, and so, like, that was it. You just never saw her face. And she was kind of the one that ran Townsville because the mayor's inept. And I guess for a reason, uh, I think it was just the fact that she, her half her characters, she's sexy, was not the message that they wanted to have in the new show. They didn't want sex appeal, so they they got rid of her. And it's just like that ruins a lot of the mayor. Yeah. yeah and and, so they, and the worst way is that they wrote it off like, wait, wait, where is she? Like they acknowledge she exists in this universe, but they're like, where is she? Dear Powerpuff Girls, I have accumulated a thousand days worth of vacation days. So now I'm going on a thousand day vacation. I'm just like, wow, that wasn't creative at all. Oh, yeah. Did they really do that? Yes. Yeah, that. there was There's there was a clip. clip. Dear Mayor, by the time you read this, I'll be gone. I couldn't bear to tell you face to face. Goodbye, Mayor. You'll do just fine. Miss Bellum. Whoa, Blossom. You do a really good Miss Bellum impression. Thanks. But apparently it's worthless now. Oh, <laughs> Miss Bellum was my everything. Yeah, oh, and what's That's worse? Okay, the, first off, it's supposed to be a joke, but like, she uh, Blossom is reading this this message by Miss Bellum, and the problem is you hear a different voice, but it's clearly not the original Miss Bellum. Yeah, it's Jennifer Hale now, and it's not uh whoever voiced her before. I'm Gomeno Sky, whoever you are. You did a great job. And uh, it just cuts to a uh, Blossom reading reading the message, which. Miss Bellum's new voice is coming out of her, th- her mouth, and B- Buttercup says, "Wow, you- you're really good at impersonating Miss Bellum." And there's a lot of things that don't work here. First off, the kids, the new kids watching this, don't know who Sarah Bellum is. Two, that's not her original voice, so there's no joke to it. Three, <laughs> Buttercup points out the joke. What the fuck? No, but you see, um, this reboot was made with adults in mind, so now it's okay. 
or was it? No, no. Nobody knows what who this reboot was made for. <laughs> no, I don't think this reboot knows what it's for. I think they're just gonna once they find something that kind of works for them, they'll just like run towards it like crazy. It's yeah, this will probably be the awkward, terrible first season, and then the following seasons will be like the uncomfortable, awkward, but like with more um, intention. I kind of wondered if how they wrote it is they put um, a bunch of demographics on a dartboard and then whichever <laughs> one they hit was the episode they're going to. They're like, OK, um, gender Uber, binary, Uber, oh, man. extreme uh, roller derby girls episode. OK, cool. We're going to lunch. I have one more thing to say about this damn reboot. One more thing. And it's art direction wise. I cannot stand the new character designs. Um, like I can't. Well, it, it, it's weird because like they're they're doing a new episode where like they, they have like a sleepover and they have like some old character throwbacks. So they bring in some old designs for background characters into it. And then they also have new girls. And it's just so obvious who's an old character and who is a new one. Not because you instantly know it because it nostalgia reasons. If you've seen the original show, it's just there's a completely different design philosophy. How they use geometric shapes are completely different from the 90s to now. And it just it bothers me so goddamn much. Yeah, it's such a mess. I mean, like it's the pro- these girls are meant to be in a 2D space and they're drawing them in like this 3D ish style and it just doesn't work not not to mention the inconsistencies with how they like portray the placement of their eyes yeah Mm -hmm. like uh like we've already heard the uh you you said you didn't really um agree with this as much stuff but like the one um still frame where it's like her eyes like at the front of her face and she looks like a fucking cyclops Mm -hmm. but also there was also um more um images i mean more like frames where bubbles eye like completely wraps around the side of her head Uh, from like a three-fourths angle that's less of um the like art design and that's just more animations relying too much on a program to do the in-betweens than because like like before when they did the turntables they had to draw each frame so mm-hmm. there was there was more attempt at making sure each frame was aesthetically pleasing or appeal one of the principles. Now the computer does it and it's just kind of like, well, you know, they make the key pose and the computer fills in the in-betweens by just moving pieces around. It, it doesn't matter. No. The, nothing really matters. I hate everything. Yeah, fuck this. This reboot sucks. Fuck everyone. It was the worst. It was just so bad. I thought I could maybe get through it, but that was like, ugh. Yeah, it was just. At, um, let a, you guys can let us know what you think of the reboot. We might read your comments. We might not. I do. Well, Pan does. Yeah. I might I not. Do. I kind I of mostly forget read to comments do just so I can uh, talk back to people who insult me. So you know. <laughs> wow. Man, you you need you need to get some thicker skin there, boy. Like. I usually just reply with K or just like reply with I remember when Newgrounds was funny when I was twelve, living in the suburbs, drinking Pepsi, playing a Halo co-op at the easiest setting during, you know. Yeah, I, I was, well, I was if, almost prepared. If you uh, if you do have a problem with Powerpuff Girls, write your congressman. And get them involved. <laughs> write to your local mayor. <laughs> write to them because we really the government should step in. This is this has gone too far. Yeah, it's just like it borders on being decent to just insultingly bad. I need to see the other three episodes uh, that aired so far because I've only seen uh, the Princess Buttercup, the the, the 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 monster one, and um, it, it said that you had to refer to one as the monster one. Like they, <laughs> every like, every episode should be a monster one. But uh, I've seen three of them. I know there's three more. I, I'm going to try to hold off judgment too harshly on it until I see all three of them. But it's not looking good. No. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like they could have done so much, so many different things with the a, a Powerpuff Girls reboot. Because, like, I, I, I know I've um, had my grievances with it before, but I feel like a, like a, a fun, lighthearted, serialized version of the Powerpuff Girls would have been kind of cool. Yeah. I like, that would have been a good way to do it, like have the big, a big difference between the two shows. Yeah, is that there's like a continuing storyline, but not like one that's super dark and mopey, but like one that's just kind of like lighthearted, fun and comic booky. Yeah, I would be. I think most people would be down for that. Like if they had said that's what we're doing, I don't think anyone would have objected to it. But yeah, it's just this new way is. Ugh. 
it, it, I, I just I mostly blame that like co- comedies are the only thing that like animation channels are like um ordering now. So well, at least uh, Disney XD still has some care for anim- for uh, action shows. What, yeah. like, what like Spider Man? Well, Sp- Star Wars Rebels and uh... Spider Man Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. Even all the Avengers shitty, show. all the shitty Marvel animated universe crap that is awful, and I hate it. I agree with you on that one, but oh, man, they still I, care about it. I, I was watching. A, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they totally care. Like that one time they crossed over with the live action sitcom Jesse. Yeah, there was. That's true. An episode uh, of Spider Man where they cross over with Jesse the sitcom. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> I, need to, I need to watch this really quickly now. But um, there's this <laughs> so one Marvel you. cartoon called uh, Hulk Agents of Smash, which it's pretty much a team of uh, Hulks, like different colored Hulks. And it's like, so everybody's the strong man in this team? What's the point? That's the joke. Second, like when you watch an episode, it's like they just found editing software and decided to use every single transition in the editing software. Like the camera's always panning or just like a star transition (laughs) or something so gimmicky. Just like it's such a pain. It's painful to watch Hulk Agents of Smash. Okay, real quick, real quick. So I I Googled this Jesse thing and uh, what I saw in my head was a lot worse than what actually is seen. Like, I was really hoping that it was just randomly, like, Drake Bell dresses Spider-Man <laughs> in a live-action setting. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't know it was going to be animated. That, that should Why didn't I think of that? That should have been the logical step. Yeah, but, uh, yeah I thought that would have been the logical, <laughs> logical step, you dingus. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for Daredevil to cross over with Fuller House. Ooh, when's that? I happen? actually want that. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, he like accidentally kills everybody in the fuller house. Oh no! Well, He's that, like, oh, that no. would work because there was a part, part time in the comics where Daredevil went to San Francisco, so <gasps> they could totally get that to work. Ah, uh, that reminds they me, they could have what? Bojack Horseman did have a crossover. No, wait, like a big homage episode of Fuller House, I believe, or something. I don't remember. Well, that's the, the show he. He was on formerly was kind of a, a full house type show. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently uh, the Bojack people tried to pitch stuff for Fuller House and Netflix was like, these are too dark. We're not we're not using you. These are actually well written. Get out of here. Is that true? Yeah. Apparently the creator came up with the, his plot for an episode was one that DJ realized that every time she told someone she loved them, they died <laughs> and that. That was going to be like an arc, apparently either one episode or several episodes where she wouldn't say I love you to anyone because oh she was afraid they'd die in a car accident. Wait, what is this? Because her husband died in a car. Her husband just died. I don't know how her husband died. But her wait, 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 wait. That way. What? Did, did she like, okay, so the, the first time she said her, to her mom, I love you, she died. And then the, she waited after three kids and a marriage, like a couple of years into it to say I love you to her husband. Well, look, I, I'm I don't so know. confused. <laughs> That's just what I heard that he wouldn't – That that's what I heard he said in an interview. I don't know the whole thing, what, but that's apparently she wouldn't say it to anyone after a certain – Who is this? The guy who created BoJack. Oh, and he was going to write for Full House? Well, he pitched, he pitched stuff because he thought it would be interesting to write for the thing that he's parroting, like to <laughs> actually work on one of those shows. But I think like – thing is, is like BoJack – is more of what I would like to see Bob Saget on than actually Full House because I know he hates that show, or at least he said he did until this reboot happened, which I always had respect because he did an interview and someone was like, ask me what my favorite episode of Full House was. And they're like, what? And he goes, none of them. (laughs) (laughs) He he, he hates them so much, but then he came back willingly. So They must have paid pretty well. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah. But I mean, then again, his whole episode is about him falling in love with the couch. Wait, did you watch it? I may have watched all 13 episodes. <laughs> A Fuller House? <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. I guess. Okay. You heard, I actually, it, you heard it from a friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally didn't like just watch one episode and then somehow a couple hours passed and I was through all of them. <sighs> that sounds depressing. <laughs> Stev, are you okay? <laughs> It ends okay. It ends with a a, uh, a a love triangle between the original boyfriend from the show and one that's actually attractive and has charisma, and and the whole plot doesn't work because the original boyfriend has no chemistry with DJ and 
it, it, there's no like actual tension because it's clear who she should be with. But she's probably uh, going to be with the original one because of nostalgia. No, she chooses neither. So there's there's it's super unsatisfying. Oh, and isn't her boyfriend the voice of Aladdin, right? Her old boyfriend. Uh, probably. Yeah, I think so. I think there was something like that. I remember. That. I stole this loaf of bread for you. It's <laughs> <laughs> like. She's like, will like, you date me now? It's 2016. I mean, I needed bread, but it's a little weird. <laughs> I've stolen a lot of other things for you. <laughs> I, 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 mean, st- I stole your boss's social security number also. Uh, <laughs> the, well, th- thanks to Fuller House, we now know that Stephanie Tanner cannot have kids. She's infertile. What? what? Yeah, that, that's, that's not an episode. You're you're fucking. No, no, no. Well, it's not an episode. It's a moment followed by a joke. OK, OK. Literally in a two minute period, uh, Stephanie reveals that she's upset because uh, DJ has three kids and she can't have any and that she moved back home because she wanted to be around kids. And then immediately afterwards, um, Kibler walks in hypnotized thinking she's a chicken. What? What? Yeah, that that is that That's happens in like real. a two minute period. No, no, this is legitimately happens. This, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So like they have this like really kind of semi dark, but mostly you know like it's it's a very you know heartwarming moment between DJ and Stephanie about this big reveal, and it's a huge like you know part of her character. And then of course, laugh track. You know, two seconds later, Kimberly Gibbler walking in, clucking like a chicken because she's hypnotized. I gotta watch this. That's this what seems it, magical. Yeah. That sounds really good. I, I like that idea. <laughs> that's, that's really dark. Wow. Oh, well. I can't have kids. You can adopt, you fucking slut. Oh, damn, Nolan. Who, who buys their kids used, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the best singers you've done in a while, Pan. Good job. <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, there's some there's some there's some kid coming home from the school bus. He's like, Man, school was rough today, but at least they have the Pan Pizza Party podcast that I can listen to. And he's like he's like, It sucks being adopted. <laughs> oh. Please like and subscribe if you're adopted. No. Yeah. What, no, what if you refer to an adopted kid as like you're like a used copy of Rogue Warrior? <laughs> what the fuck is ro- oh that game? Yeah, what's that? Yeah. It's a bad game. It's a, like one of the worst received modern console games. With, didn't star Mickey Rooney and he raps at the end credits? Yep. Oh. What? Yes. Refer, refer to your local um, terrible adopted child as a, a used copy of Rogue Warrior from EB Games for three ninety nine. Yeah, if you ever want to see Mickey Rooney <laughs> rap at a, in the end credits of a video game, here it is. Look at Ninja style. I'm going to bring it to him. Show me what time it is. Hope you assholes like fireworks. Ooh! Fucking God, he's getting in my way. No surprise, motherfuckers. Happy fucking birthday. That's right, Natty. Now you sweet piece of shit. Enjoy the ride, cocksucker. Have a nice trip. Boom time, baby. Trick or treat. Looks like a party. Come on. I got places to go and people to meet. Assholes are everywhere. Fuckers are out in force. Hi ho, hi ho. This fucker's gonna blow. Anytime, anywhere, any place. I kind of do. I'm gonna have to check it out. Now it's two things Jim has to look at after the yeah, podcast. I, There's so much. There, I'm podcast. learning so much today. Yeah, so am I. And I don't quite know how to handle it. All right, actual news time. Hey, remember that anime Fully Cooly? It lasted six episodes. Because yeah. that's all it needed to tell its story. Well, now the they're going to do 12 more episodes. Son of a bitch. Yeah, Tsunami Adult Swim has helped fund a new season, well, two new seasons of Fully Cooly, each with six episodes. And it's going to be done by Production IG. Adult Swim could have helped, like, um, do, re, um, do the paperwork and, like, funded new seasons of Symbionic Titan, but no. Hey, hey, we're, we're, we, got to appeal, we got to appeal to those fucking neats that will watch our goddamn shows. Hey, we're, Fuck, barely, we're barely getting Samurai Jack Season 2, so, you know, we're maybe in a couple, like, season 30 five. years. In 30 years, we'll get Symbionic Season 2. To be fair, fully coolly, at least for me, like represents a lot of early Adult Swim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Like that, because like that's a show that I, out of all the like original lineup, Fully Cooly was like probably the one that I enjoyed the most, even if it was six episodes and aired quite frequently. Yeah, that and Cowboy Bebop, like that was our two biggest animes, I think. 
Well, Cowboy Bebop was the first anime, I believe. Oh, yeah, because that, mm-hmm. that was back when uh, Adult Swim was only, like, on, uh, I think, Thursdays and Sundays only. And yeah, it was just a line of comedy American cartoons and just this one Cowboy Bebop anime that was there. Well, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, what was it? Oh, uh, Home Movies, The Brack Show, oh, Aqua Teen, <laughs> Space Ghost. C-Lab. I think that was it. Sea Lab, yeah. And then it would have the interstitials where it's like, all kids out of the pool. Yeah, which, you know. They don't use the uh, all kids out of the pool thing. So the, now Adult Swim, like, you kind of forget, like, why is it called Adult Swim? It's like, oh, you're right, that thing. It was just all, all this pool imagery all throughout mm-hmm. it. I guess people could just kind of infer Adult yeah. Swim. Oh, like when Adult Swim in the pool. Yeah. I remember so, so, only one pool that did that when I was younger, and I and there was only one time that I'm like, well, I guess I'll just sit here and like splash my feet a little. Yeah, that was always the worst. I mean, especially I would always try to pee in the pool right before adult swim and then get. <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> Jim. You're savage. Well, you know, it's like I don't like that kind of stuff. It's like adults should get special treatment. What have they done? I mean, except for pay for the pool membership. Well, I mean, that was the first episode of Kids Next Door. Yeah, that was. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, man. Kids Next Door. That didn't get a sequel, even though it yeah. easily could have. You know, yeah. The only reason Powerpuff Girls got a reboot is because it made a lot of merchandise money. Kid, Kid Sex Tour had merchandise, but it didn't make that much. Uh, so, it, like, I owned a few of the action figures before I stupidly sold them. I didn't even know they had action figures. Yeah, they had they had a, quite a few, and I'm pretty sure it's really. I remember Shallon showed on had action figures too, but like they were super rare because they never fucking stocked them, yeah. and like now they're ridiculously expensive and like collectors' items. Speaking of toys, I actually went to BotCon this weekend and I also went to a bunch of like old school like like collector toy shops and I was shocked to see what kind of like figures from toy lines I've never heard of. Uh for example, did you know Big Guy and Rusty had toys? Yeah. No. Nobody really I did not know. Show. I I Jim I now own a Big Guy and Rusty toy. <laughs> I call it, it was like $15. I I call it the Big Gay Rusty. Ooh. I'm sure you do. Yeah. I mean, it always bothered me that uh, a Rusty sounded like Bobby Hill because they're the same voice. But I remember <laughs> there's this one episode I remember I watched and I was like, fuck this. I'm not watching this shit. I don't know. Some kid gets like a birthday present and um, it just starts fusing objects together. And the mom says, that's too dangerous. Don't use that. And the object fuses the mom with like a refrigerator and her face is like stretched across the refrigerator like some John Carpenter shit or something. And I was like, fuck this show. I'm not watching this ever. I liked Big Guy, Steve. That was cray cray. But yeah, I got, I got like a Tomb Raider toy and um, a action warrior nun. What? <laughs> yeah, it was like $8. I was like, I have to. It was a nun that's like in like BDSM looking gear and a sword. I was like, sold. What the fuck? But next news, unless anyone has anything to say about Fully Cooly. Uh, oh, it's well. two seasons. I'm, two new seasons. Does it deserve? Little, like, does it really need two seasons? I mean, like, does it really need a continuation at all? I mean, I'm excited to be when I first heard, but then I was thinking about it. I was like, it did kind of end per- perfectly, so I'd have to know. Like, the, I don't know. They how have a plot synopsis for the new one, well, and it just uh, sounds like a rehash of the first. What, what's it, what happens in the new season of Fooly Cooly? Many years have passed since Naoto and Haruha Haruko shared their adventure together. Meanwhile, the war between the two entities known as Medical Mechanica and Fraternity rages across the galaxy. Enter Hidomi, a young teenaged girl who believes there is nothing amazing to expect from her average life, until one day when a new teacher named Haruko arrives at her school. Soon enough, Medical Mechanica is attacking her town, and Hidomi discovers a secret within her that um, could save everyone, a secret that only Haruko can unlock. Why did Haruko return to Earth? What happened to her Rickenbacker 4001 she left with Naoto, Naota? And where did the human-type robot Kanti go? All these questions and more will be answered in the new season of the series, which is set to premiere in late 2017, early 2018 on Adult Swim. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so um, the girl the, the, with the scooter, what's her name? Haruha Haruko? Yeah, so I guess she's like the Doctor Who, and now she's just going to different people and helping them. Uh. <laughs> I can't believe Fully Cooly is Doctor Who. Fully Cooly was about puberty, so 
I guess now we're going to see the the girl's side of it, and I guess she's going to, like, maybe bleed out a robot or something. Uh, <laughs> That's going to happen. Where, you know it. That'd be fucking hilarious. I knew Please where you were going with that. You know it. And I just didn't want robot it. Robot blood. No, they're going to have a scene where it's like, it's tasted blood. Fuck. And, like, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> what? You know it's this is going to be cray-cray. I mean, I, I, I guess that'd be interesting. You know, it's like a, I guess a female version of just the main character from the last one who's probably won't be in this one or maybe he will just a cameo or something like that so yeah maybe it'll be good i don't know i'm kind of interested in that fact i mean it's like a, an alternate take on it yeah but yeah next news nothing really special ever happens here in this place until she came along next thing i knew i had things coming out of my head and I had a robot living in my house. And, well, it's a bunch of other weird stuff. Whatever. It's really not that big a deal. Do you find this difficult to understand? Um, hey, does anyone remember uh, the Kickstarter to the Goon? About, like, six years ago, there was a Kickstarter for this comic book by Dark Horse, The Goon. They wanted to make mm-hmm. a CGI R-rated film of this comic called The Goon, which I don't know what it's about. I don't know. I've never read it. Uh, okay. It looked I'm, cool. Yeah, I'm aware of it. The Kickstarter funded uh, an animatic, basically like storyboards and such, and the, they were going to pitch that to a studio. It hasn't been seen publicly, and it just kind of vanished. But uh, the directors came out and said that uh, recently, just <laughs> yesterday when I recorded this, I mean, when we recorded this, um, w- with Deadpool's success and I guess maybe also Sausage Party's potential success that the project is off the ground again and is still alive so they're going to try getting it back up again the the goon oh. r-rated animated film i mean there's a preview for it just look up the goon uh, kickstarter or whatever on youtube you'll find it support but has a studio has a studio approached them or they just have heard interest the the, the goons being directed by the same guy who did deadpool the director tim miller uh, it is oh yeah, that like, explains why yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, that makes more according sense. According to this article, the goon has been in development for a long time, and, may, and some have may have forgotten that the Deadpool director Tim Miller is co-directing the film. Is he like? Well, I guess then the question is because Deadpool two, I don't think has a release date, mm-hmm. so it would be. I assume he'll probably have to do Deadpool two first, um, but I bet he would have enough sway to get it made. That actually makes sense to me. Um, I think also. Uh, he says there's been a number of calls about the goon. So, yeah, that that is studios approaching him mm-hmm. and his co-director about it from okay. the success. I so. mean, if if it's the director of Deadpool, that's, I think, different. I mean, yeah. you know, he could he could get it made because he has sway and Fox has been known to, like, reward directors and let them kind of have one. Mm-hmm. So he could probably be able to do it if he will. You know, if he wants to, I don't know what he's, he's probably getting offered everything under the sun. Okay, next news. Uh, Hey, remember that movie Freddy Got Fingered? <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Well, yeah. Uh, recently a man was arrested for not returning his Freddy Got Fingered VHS tape uh, about 14 years after they rented it from like a, a local video store that no is no longer alive. This is not animated related, you piece of it, shit. It, I'm bringing it up because everyone keeps linking the story to me and saying, is this you? It's like, no, I would never steal a VHS tape. How fucking dare you? Fucking you fucking would. You fucker. No, when I saw the story, I was like, oh, I have to tweet this because it's so funny. And I got so many messages were like, is it Pan? Is it Pan? I was like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't say it was Pan. It just oh, is a funny story that Thank what God. I want to know is, is was did he take a blue VHS? Because if you got it on VHS, it's blue or did he get a regular black one? That's the question. I think everyone's wondering. Special edition version of Freddy Got Fingered. Because if it's well, special edition, he should pay because that's probably worth more. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I was like. That that warrants the arrest because at first because I, I know plenty of people who have it returned films to debunk no longer existing rental well, places and no one Stev, else is getting busted. Stev, will you name, name names? Uh, I will protect my friends. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Because uh, clearly the, the authorities are listening. Yeah, We truly are in a police state where you can't even take a VHS and forget to return it. James Myers, a 37-year-old single dad in North Carolina, was arrested Tuesday for not returning a 2001 VHS copy of the Tom Green movie, Freddy Got Fingered. The bizarre court date came about after Myers was pulled over on Tuesday morning for a broken taillight, but later learned that there was a warrant out for his arrest because he had not returned the movie. On Wednesday night, the arrestee received a call from Tom Green, the writer-director star of Freddy, who reached out after Myers' friend shared the story on Twitter. The 44-year-old comedian said that he could put in a good word with the court or even help out financially. Not returning rental property is a Class 3 misdemeanor in North Carolina and punishable by a fine of up to $200. Well, apparently uh, Tom Green said he'd pay uh, like pay the fine for the guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, the guy was taking That's his... That's so cool. His, yeah, no, that is... He should... I mean, he didn't have Tom to. Green is broke and he's willing to pay oh, for this dude. That's so nice of him. Well, yeah, he is giving up two shift pays at the restaurant he works at to get <laughs> that um, one that one <laughs> restaurant where he like threw a sub sandwich at a guy and then that one meat shop that he worked at where he was going yeah. ding dong. Wait, well, wait, wait. He, he, he's not he's not like living off of that sweet uh clone high cameo money. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sadly, I don't think no. <laughs> I think he gets a check every time like Charlie's Angels plays on TV. Yeah. So, you know, he's got he's got he's got at least 50 he's cents. He's set for life. I, I recall reading an interview or some quote from him talking about the Charlie's Angels movies in retrospect and he said that like some some uh, reporter jokingly said, "So, did you have to sleep with anybody to get in the film cuz you know, the he was at the time married to um who was it?" Drew Barrymore. Yeah, who's the star of the film. And, like, mm-hmm. Tom Green said, that basically had to happen because I read the script and it was the biggest piece of shit I ever read. <laughs> I swear this is somewhere online you could find a quote him saying it is. They weren't good movies. The first one's just kind of ridiculous and it's um, it came out in 2000. It was very much of the time with quick editing. But I didn't see the second one with Demi Moore and all that stuff. Like, it, it was just... I don't know. I mean, I grew up. In, I grew up in a household um, with three women, and they and they enjoyed their Charlie's Angels movies <laughs> and their um, <laughs> terrible musical film adaptations like Rent. Oh. And uh, oh, so uh, that's how Rent. This whole Rent thing started. No, this whole <laughs> Rent. Thi- this whole Rent thing started because uh, I listened. I think I heard this uh, a random song. I was like, I like this shit. This is dank. And then I just kind of. It butted from there, and then, and then you said you hated Rent, and I'm like, oh, I have to, I have to like milk this for all it's worth, <laughs> because I am a, to... I am a creature of hate, and like, how many, how many seconds do you think you milked it for? Well, considering the fact that we're still like carrying the sound and that you posted a review, I'd say a long time. Oh, yeah. see, that was you were supposed to say five thousand. 3,100, never oh. mind. You said seconds, not minutes. <laughs> don't they do seconds? They don't it's go minutes. That? Oh, damn it. I 525,600 uh. minutes, you dope. Uh, uh. Did you actually watch Rent? Is yes, I did. Is your review real? You yes, review. I, really, I really reviewed it. I really, like, researched. I read a lot of stuff about it. Like, I got deep. I, I got know, I deep into it. Rent. No, I believe you. I just wanted to. Charlie's Angels fucking sucks. But. You know, the sad part is that guy was driving his kid to school and then he got like, that's like out of like, why would you? Oh, well, actually, what happened was is like he was driving his kid to school and the cops pulled him over and the cops said, sir, I don't know if you know this, but we have a warrant for your arrest. I mean, they just pulled him over for like a traffic thing, but they said, I checked and you apparently didn't return a VHS and there's a warrant for you (laughs) for this movie called Freddy Got Fingered. And they just told him, like, drop your daughter off and come back to the station later. So they didn't really arrest him on the spot. They just said, hey, promise you'll come to the station, okay? We're going to arrest you. So, you know. I I honestly feel like if if an officer asked me nicely, I'd kind of feel, like, obligated to. (laughs) Like, okay, you asked me nicely. You're you're just trying to do your job. I'll come over. I mean, no, I wanted it. I wanted it so bad to be like him being put in handcuffs, pushed against the thing. I'm like, I bet you're one of those people. Don't even rewind either. No, he wasn't Mexican, so they didn't do that. Oh. If if I was if a cop asked me nicely to come to the station and I was driving my 
kid to school, I would I would uh, start the car, we'd drive by the school and go straight to fucking Mexico. <laughs> I, no one can find us there. I am I'm fucking done. They're not catching that Freddy got fingered. And I would have that in the glove compartment, like like don't <laughs> Your open kid it. starts crying. Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> First of all, I'm no longer your dad. Second of all, I'm dropping first, you off at the border. First, I want to tell you my real name is, is Stephen Smith. And don't know. No, the, 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 if this was a movie, the good part would be they'd open the glove compartment like right towards like, like, you know, like in the middle, like towards the end, they'd open it and realize they did seal Freddy but he got fingered. And it would be like this big moment, oh, you know, shit. it's like the future. No, 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 no. It has to be like set in the future. Where uh, the kid's grown up? No, no, no. The kid's grown up, and he has like a, a huge hatred for Seth Green for for, for Tom creating Green, no, Tom, that, Tom, that, Green. That, Tom Green. Tom Green. Sorry. I mean, he can so, hate Seth Green too if he wants. <laughs> no, no. He hates Tom Green for creating the film that tore his family apart because him and his dad were the only ones that made it. Oh no. <laughs> I like this so Man, much. I can't believe Tom Green caused a, a father to get arrested and get separated from her from his daughter. No, it was the daughter. Yeah, so then the daughter, like, kidnaps Tom Green, ties him up and interrogates him and just, like, sh- tortures him for destroying the, her life. Fuck you, Tom Green. Yep. This is the this is the best movie that will never, ever happen. The, we can the make best. A starter. The real, what, what really probably will happen is he'll pay the fine, he'll come home, him and his wife will be cleaning out the attic, and she'll be like, you had it the whole time. And he'll be like, I knew, I knew... <laughs> I knew the whole time I had it. I've never given that shit up. Fuck Hollywood video. This is my tape. No one can have it. No one can have it. Ever. It's okay, baby. He whispers Green. into its ear. We're, or they, we went they, so far with this joke. They find a, t, uh, a TV VHS in their attic that constantly is programmed to right when it gets at the end of Freddy Got Fingered, instantly rewinds it and plays the tape again. And he goes up there sometimes to relive his past youth. It's played so often that it's just snowy, like static, because each time you watch a VHS, it slowly destroys itself. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, hmm, that's pretty interesting. Oh, it, did you not know that? No, not that, really. That is, that is true, but not, not like, I mean, very slowly. How you many know. times do you have to do it just to destroy it? To- I th- I definitely did it to one because when we did the Ninja Turtles podcast, I had an old VHS from the like ninety one nineteen ninety or ninety one, and I tried to play it, and it like was too snowy and messed up. And uh, when I asked my mom, she was like, "Yeah, you watched that tape like over and over again for like four years. Like, <laughs> no wonder it didn't work." Like. Are you serious? I was like, oh, okay. Okay, like you, you didn't, yeah, you didn't have to be passive aggressive about it, mom. Jeez. Well, I think she was nicer about it, but how long but, have but I, I been watching this tape? <laughs> she was like, look, we didn't have babysitters, so like, just give me a break, you know. No, oh, but now nowadays, if parents want their kids to be entertained, just go on YouTube and look up uh, finger songs. You know, you know finger songs. What? No. What? Okay. No. Okay. Just type in in YouTube, uh, like a cartoon like Adventure Time or Scumball, and look up Finger Song. There's like five thousand videos, honest to God, of just like some nursery rhyme stuff, but with the images of like cartoon characters. And I don't know who makes these or where they originated from. I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna do that, and then I won't. No. <laughs> yeah. It's just a, a phenomenon. Like I just don't know where this came from. But uh, anything else on this? No. I think we exhausted this topic. Yeah. So <laughs> I wasn't real. the one who fucking stole that VHS tape. So stop ruining my good image. I think so, what we did with jail. this. No, shut up. It's not. I'm not going to jail. But uh, next news is uh, the Minions got people fucked up. Okay. Okay, so April Fool's. Um, Google Gmail they decided it was a good idea to move around the buttons and replace one of the reply buttons or forward buttons to Minions Mic Drop. It basically sends the email, except it includes a GIF of a Minion dropping a mic. And since this was taking the place of like a reply button, a lot of people accidentally sent messages with this thing. Nobody knew what this button was. It was just there where a normal button should be. 
So clearly, uh, Google pretty much took it down immediately. No, I, I almost accidentally sent that in an email to someone because it was like you're so used to hitting those buttons, like mm -hmm. not thinking about it. And like I was like, wait a minute, something's not right here. Yeah. Ew. So, yeah, minions fuck people over. Yeah, probably someone probably lost their job because they ended their email with a minion mic drop and they're like, fucking Stacy's fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so sick. Of, we, you know what probably happened is someone got complaints about how many times they bring up the minions, and the day before they're like, "If you send me another email with a fucking minions gif, you are so done." And then they, they did it. They sent an email apologizing, and then it has a minion mic drop. Oh, fired. No, all my minion <laughs> memes gone. Nice going, Google. Yeah, good job. Why don't you search some self-respect? <laughs> Yeah, so I guess that's all for the news. Oh yeah, and Uncle Grandpa has got canceled. Yeah, what's oh, the? Oh yeah, that's just worth talking about. You know what's? What's the deal up? with it? Okay, you know what's fucked up is uh, Cartoon Network ordered like several episodes for a new season, and the the, the episodes were produced, but at last minute Cartoon Network decided. No, let's uh, change the number. Let's get the same amount of episodes, but split them up into two seasons. And a lot of journalists thought they renewed renewed Uncle Grandpa for a new season, which no, they just canceled it and used these shady tactics to make it seem like they got a new season or something. They did something very similar to Steven Universe as well. And yes, I just announced, I just mentioned Steven Universe again. But uh, yeah. Steven Universe is still going on. It's still going to get new episodes. Yeah, uh, well, uh, okay, so the big thing was they they announced two seasons for Steven Universe. They were both 52, and now they rearranged it to where season two already aired. It's, it's, season two is over. Like, it ended with log date. So that's 26 episodes. Then season three is 26. And then four is 26 and five is 26. But this article made it sound like there's new episodes being ordered for both seasons. Mm -hmm. But no new episodes have been ordered publicly yet. Doe. Okay. Yeah, that sucks. So, hey, anyone see Superman v. Batman? I did. <laughs> that, that, was, that was a graceful transition. I don't give a shit. I'm tired. Bat, that, that was a movie. I'm getting slow in my old age, Alfred. Even you got too old to die young. Not for lack of trying. The greatest gladiator match in the history of the world. Son of Krypton versus Bat of Gotham. Well, here I am. Experience it in IMAX. Rated PG-13. It's like an extended version of the trailer. I, had to, I actually had to see it twice that weekend because my family was in town and they wanted your, to... Your review was brutal. Oh, it was? Yeah. Uh, oh, because my, my parents were like, should we watch your review before we go? And I was like, because I do start it off with me going like, it's a movie for stupid people. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I hope they don't watch it. They didn't. But uh, a lot of people told me if you if you listen to the bad buzz before, it made it better because your expectations were so low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but but it was like seeing it in IMAX was interesting because it kind of shows like they don't even really know what they're like. Seeing it a second time, I realized when the uh, spoilers for a movie no one even likes um, when the Congress place blows up. Um, and and then Batman's like, well, now I'm going to get Superman, even though all the media was like, well, it's not Superman's fault, <laughs> which was like such a weird story beat. Like you basically not only use it as a way to get Batman to go, now I'm really going to go after Superman. You right after have the, a part where someone's like, oh, but it's not really his fault. So you, you probably shouldn't be that extreme. It's like and the order of the scenes was weird. It was just like like someone there was one part where. Um, uh, 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 Lawrence Fishburne is like, where's Clark? Probably in Kansas. And you'd think they would cut to him in Kansas, right? Like, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. There's like 17 plot lines that go on, and then suddenly he's in Kansas. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and you're like, what the hell is wrong with this movie? It was just like, didn't, like, I don't know what happened. It has such a weird flow, but it is, I think it's like Snyder with those movies reminds me of Michael Bay with Transformers, where it's like such a but like a free for all of, you know, just editing. I don't know. It's just like has no flow to it. Like it wasn't enjoyable, but I do really 
like the Batman dream sequence part, yeah. <laughs> even though you could cut that out of the movie. <laughs> like it has no bearings on the film. It's just a setup, which I guess they're doing crisis on infinite earths, which I've never read, but um, that part I liked and the whole flash coming, was that a dream? Dream sequence or not, that's a bit – I don't know. I just – I mean Wonder Woman was cool. I feel like most people are like, who gives a shit? Wonder Woman was cool. Let's focus on that. that yeah, thing. Wonder Woman's great. What did you think? But if the movie felt like it was just like, and this happens, and this other thing happens, and this other thing over here happens, and then this other thing over here happens, and it just feels like a bunch of stuff going on. And it's like, <laughs> it was like a big jar of piss. <laughs> Um, Sorry. Well, at least Batman was really cool in it, you know. I mean, everyone was good yeah. except Superman. Yeah, he w- that actor has never gotten me to like him as Superman. It's just like, how do you screw that? Like Brendan Routh was a better Superman, and nobody likes Brendan Routh anymore. Yeah. So like, they should have just gotten Brendan Routh again because people you, like. You said nobody likes what? Brendan Routh. Well, I don't think like people are like. Because the problem with Brendan Routh is he was just doing Christopher Reeve. And that was like, he wasn't a new Superman portrayal so much. I think I think he seems like a nice guy. I just think it was kind of not, and I understand that was in the continuity of the Christopher Reeves story, uh, movies, which is why they cast him in that. But like, he's likable. But I don't think he was like a movie star. Like, like Christopher Reeves casting was like one of the greatest uh, casting of an unknown actor I think we've ever seen in like Hollywood history just because he's like so likable in those Superman movies even in Superman 3 which is garbage not as much of garbage as Batman and Superman but it's up there um, he's still really good like he's a really good actor and I don't think they need someone who everybody's like holy shit I love Superman but I don't think anybody likes Henry like would you see a movie because of Henry Cavill I don't think anyone would Nah. I mean, I totally would. I'm not just saying that to spite you. Really? Totally. Did you see Man from Uncle? What the fuck is that? That's a movie he was in. <laughs> what the fuck? No, would, I mean, do you like him as Superman or no? Uh, he looks like Superman. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just. Mopey. I mean, maybe if the movie was, you know, less mopey about everything and more optimistic like superman should be yeah i mean they were a little too concerned at playing counterpoint to marvel like they need to just have a fun superhero story like not have a like i just don't i don't know i'm i mean i'm excited for suicide squad and wonder woman but i'm not really excited for justice league to be honest yeah, 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 when they have those cameos, like how they're gonna. Okay, here's how they show off the Justice League cameos. Oh. <laughs> Basically, yes. um, Batman just emails Wonder Woman like this flash drive that uh, he stole from Lex Luthor, and Wait, he flash... emails a flash drive to her. Well, well, well he, he has the info from the flash drive, but oh, what he has a really big. Uh, he has a, a really good email server that can send huge terabytes of files to someone else. Yeah, and, and Wonder Woman receives this, uh, basically this interface that has like four logos on it. Like, I guess Lex yeah. Luthor had like these graphic designers just like, okay, we need to come up with logos for these potential superheroes. What's this mask <laughs> guy? What, what can well, I, I took it as Lex Luthor is a douche and only douches would be uh, really interested in like brand recognition yeah. or like into brand maintenance. Like that's such a douchey thing to be interested in. I was like, that makes sense, I guess. And the movie like takes a break and it's just like Wonder Woman clicking through three different video files of the Flash, uh, Aquaman and Cyborg. And she's just watching these videos to preview the new superheroes that are coming out, the new movies. They cut the whole movie for like an advertisement almost. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, this is cool. It's like, oh, wait, but if Zack Snyder's doing this, uh, no. Well, there's rumors they're trying to get him uh, off it and have George Miller do Justice League because he was going to do that Justice League movie that fell apart in, like, 2007. Um, And since Warner Brothers wants to do something with George Miller, that might happen. But they just they need to make a fun superhero movie. That's the thing. It's like people like to have fun with these. And, like, it wasn't a fun movie. And... It's just, it's a weird, and, oh, and 
Jesse Eisenberg was awful. Like, wait, He's no, you can't have fun in this movie. It's a serious superhero movie. What are you, Marvel? You asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you. I, this I is serious. That was that was pretty much what Pan just did was the movie. <laughs> no, that's the fanboys that are they're like, yo, you just you just like Marvel movies. Yeah, we like Marvel movies because they're actually good, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, it's like I I I'm curious when Civil War comes out how much that movie like trounces Batman and Superman. I'm actually because, kind of, I'm worried about it, honestly. Really? Yeah, because we have bit. like an, we had enough Marvel movies, but this is the first time Batman versus Superman does a thing in theaters. Well, I I think there's enough like because people at least understand and have a connection to those characters, and I think people are going to go see, it, especially with the Spider-Man stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's some of the characters. That's why I'm worried. <laughs> Yeah. Well, because well, the, even though people know who Spider Man is, but there's a couple of new characters just kind of thrown into this, and that kind of worries me a little bit. Because, well, I mean, it sh- it'll probably be fine, but I liked having the other characters having a couple of movies to get to know who they are before they appear in the big ones. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with you. That was that is much better. Yeah. yeah. But that, what is there like two or three? Four new superheroes. It's going to be premiering in the Avengers. It's just a uh, Black Panther and oh. Spider Man, but then there's okay. villains also. Mm-hmm. So, but it. I think. I mean, I have confidence that'll be pretty good because Marvel's premiering it this Tuesday, and that's really early. And if you're premiering a movie early, it's usually because it's better. Whereas Batman and Superman, they kept, they held off as long as they could. So if if you like are premiering it early. They want the reviews to come out like the Monday before, probably, which is a really good sign. Like if you're premiering reviews of something that early, that shows like you have good buzz or right. the studio knows you're pretty good. But I don't know. I mean, you know, Marvel could majorly fuck up, but I kind of have faith in them at this point. I mean, I don't love everything they do, but this is a big movie for them. So I imagine they want it to be pretty good. Too bad we all know that's dies what we don't know that yet well i don't know about one. that what the fuck that was in the comic oh shit you expect me to read <laughs> fuck <laughs> that's what you get you fucking loser God damn l- 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 shit i mean we don't know that's gonna happen right now so mm. you know because <laughs> they, uh, they they're not, not always faithful to the comics yeah <laughs> But also, like, with Batman versus Superman, like, I think the movie could have done better if, um, they cut out Lois Lane. Like, or Superman. <laughs> or, cut, or, or just cut this movie entirely. Just cut it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, also... <laughs> Lois Lane, like, I don't know, there's a subplot where she's, like, figuring out, like, wait a minute, these weapons were sold by Lex Luthor, and that goes nowhere. It's like, what was the Well, that, that plot line... That doesn't make any sense because they blame Superman for that. But Superman doesn't use guns. So why would they blame Superman for shooting people? <laughs> I don't know. I don't Like know. Th- that movie, if you go that deep into it or like watch it a second time, you'll start to notice like none of this makes any sense. Like this is so – anyway, sorry. It's so – I mean it could have been a better movie if they you know, didn't have like 10,000 things going on. Like really, you could condense this and like – I mean all yeah. that really happens is like Batman gets mad at Superman. Uh, there's motivation for that and Lex Luthor does this thing and that inspires them to fight each other. Really, you could have, <laughs> this movie could have been way shorter but no, they had to shove 10 different things going on at this, in this film. I also – so I kind of think that movie coming out after Deadpool was like not a great thing for them because you have the biggest hit movie that everyone's talking about this year has been Deadpool and it's making fun of superhero movies. And then you have like a super serious superhero movie. I mean, that could not that probably did not help them at all. You know, mm-hmm. it's like if you're going to put out a super serious crap fest like that right after Deadpool, it's like it's just not going to the the public's. Uh, opinion on these things is just not working for you at that point so one thing i learned about uh batman v superman is when you're making a tracking device maybe don't have it blink give it a little blinky (laughs) light on it no but you don't see this is i don't want to get into a tracking device 
nice debate right now, but like it would not work aesthetically if they don't blink. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. It's kind of like a thing for the audience to know what that is. If if you read my tra- my book tracking device theory, you totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the theory of making tracking devices. Oh yeah, and also Lois Lane, she fuck she fucks herself in this movie, well, metaphorically speaking, but like there's a scene at the end where she just does something so stupid for no reason, and she says, oh, shit, why did I do that? Oh, yeah. Fuck. That was so stupid. God damn. Fuck. Uh, so, that... yeah, I kind of liked the movie. You know, the action was cool. Everything else was stupid. Well, if you, if you saw it, when I saw an IMAX, the parts that were in IMAX and the, part that wa- the parts that weren't, the Doomsday fight was not, uh, uh, they didn't make it shot in IMAX, but then the funeral was. <laughs> yeah it it was like i was like you guys like fucked up so bad like how did you <laughs> anyway oh yeah damn so is that all for batman vagina superman <laughs> i mean i didn't see it so i don't really care it was cool I, but i hate it, it looked yeah awesome, so i didn't have any interest in going to see it yeah it was i don't know you can sleep through it later when it's on a plane or something yeah you can just skip through all the cool parts and just forget everything else yeah uh, yeah like when, like it should probably be out by uh june right i don't know probably because that's when i go to ax so mm-hmm. but yeah yeah i get to watch that on the plane so you guys want to get into questions sure wade wilson when I'm finished, your mutated cells will heal anything. But you think we're making you a superhero? We're making you a super slave. Uh, we'll see about that, Posh Spice. Oh, there's the money shot, baby. Deadpool. So yeah, Super and Batman was okay. But anyway, questions. If anybody has a question, be sure to type out the word question so it's easier to find and post them in the YouTube comments of this video. Question, how do you feel about cartoon, TV shows, video games, and movies getting leaked? I mean, it sucks for people when it's not the finished version that they want to put out, which is act, which is actually how the Napster thing started and why Metallica sued Napster is because they re- released unfinished versions of that Mission Impossible 2 song. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I... I I mean, it probably sucks if you worked really hard on something and suddenly it's free. But it seems to happen more with music. I don't see it happening as much with movies anymore. Well, it's mostly like plot details and stuff that get leaked now instead of entire movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think back to like certain like pilots or just short films that get leaked, like the the Deadpool thing, how that got leaked. And that was an intention. That was an intentional leak to hopefully get some... uh, public opinion swaying the uh what's going to happen to that movie didn't ryan reynolds kind of say he imply that he might have been the one to do that well he said that there was four people that could have uh leaked it so and he's one of those four so you don't know yeah it was a good move on their part to leak it yeah i still i still need to see that movie i really want to i mean i kind of feel like uh some some of these leaks are kind of intentional like to give get some buzz out there because I mean, it's more, like, sneakier if it's a leak. That way everyone's just like, ooh, now I gotta see this before the studio takes it out, and people will actively search for it, you know? Mm-hmm. But then you you have the, the what happened with Wolverine Origins, where yeah. they leaked the, uh, un, spe, the special effects weren't done cut, and that, like, I mean, that movie was horrible. There was no way that movie was gonna be a huge hit without it, but that definitely hurt the box office for that. Yeah. So, but there hasn't been a big leak since then, right? I don't think there has. Mm, I don't know, but For I remember there was this wise. one movie in like 2010. I forget what it was about. People s- trapped inside a um, an armored car. I think it was called Armored. Anyway, so the movie, the entire film, while it was in theaters, uh, got leaked on the PlayStation Network, and anybody could just download it for free. <laughs> Oh bad. wait, there was a movie about dragons that just got was huge on on Pirate Bay, and they just signed a distribution deal because it was so big on Pirate Bay. Was it Dragon Wars? No, I wish. No, Damn. it was. It was. I forget what it was called. I just read that. I'm sorry to bring it up without having a link, but uh, 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 yeah, it was like it was by the guy who produced. Like he actually produced Hardcore Henry, but he also produced. Uh, he directed like um. 
uh, wanted and stuff. And he he's pr- uh, producing it and distributing it because they're like, oh, well, people are going to watch this because we saw it leak so well all over the world. Mm-hmm. So they're actually using that as data to show what people actually like now. Yeah. Real quick, okay. is Wanted the that movie that's based off a comic where the comic they were super villains, but in the movie they were spies? Yeah, uh, were they curveballs? I, I, I just saw it they, with it. I, I didn't. I didn't see it, but I know Angelina Jolie's in it. So if that's the one, then yes. Yeah. They were like a secret society in, or something. I don't know. I know it was completely different from what the comic was about. Yeah, the comic was about uh, a guy finding out that his dad was a supervillain. Mm-hmm. And that, and then in the <laughs> in the movie, it just made it where it was spies who listened to a like quilt-making thing. And the quilt would determine who dies and who lives, and then they had to go kill the person. And was he it, found out that his name's on the quilt. What the fuck? Was it a, com- was it a good quilt? Like a comfy quilt? Or? Uh, no. Oh, no. no. So it was bad. Someone's grandmother? Yeah, I would. I mean, I'm, I'm a little cold. I wouldn't mind a quilt. Yeah. I'm actually under a pillow myself. Or not, not a pillow, but a blanket myself. <laughs> but next question. Speaking of hardcore Henry, Arukana Lupatator says, question, what do you guys think of hardcore Henry? And if you see... It, do you think it this will pave the way for first person perspective movies? But probably, uh, hopefully not. Hope, I mean, well, I think I'm mean, I'm I'm not um, putting my opinion in, but like if it makes money, people are going to be like, oh, that made money. That means we have to make something that'll make money like that, and then obviously a bunch of shit will come pave the way. You know, oh God, you know what would be you know what would be super meta, hmm. like first person found footage. Uh, <laughs> horror movies i mean i'm sure that'll have but i think hardcore henry's more about uh the visual storytelling from video games coming into yeah. cinema that's really to me what oh, after seeing it i was like i just because my theory is is just that uh most kids grew up with the action stories through video games first and then saw all action movies so i think that's why hardcore henry makes a lot of sense but this is a big year for uh, video game movies with Ratchet and Clank and Warcraft and all that. So, you know, I think things are about to change in terms of that. Yeah, I mean, this was a really good video game tri- tribute. I did. I really love the film. No, <laughs> I mean, oh, you guys seen it already? Movie. Yeah, I've it seen was it. great. I mean, it's I mean, people are like, there's not enough story. It's like, what do you what did you expect? Like, if you see the trailer, that's exactly what you'd expect from the movie. Just I mean, it's it's a dumb action movie, but it's a dumb action. It's a dumb action action movie with a good twist because like all the all the characters Charto Coupley is playing and all the violence and like they just have like they have a lot of fun with it and it's like it's a fun if you're someone who like watches a violent action movie and starts laughing it's for you but if you're someone who's disgusted by it you shouldn't be seeing it at all yeah (laughs) because uh that that guy from District 9 Charto Coupley I mean he it's just like why does he keep appearing in different forms and they explain it just it's such an outrageous why what kind of film just like he's he's so good in it he was like really funny i really like i mean i was just like <laughs> it cheering was a fun or just movie. like well silently cheering just like yes whenever anything cool happened in this film i, I just i there were so many good moments that i don't know i had a lot of fun with it i mean i know it's dumb but it was like fun yeah dumb action movie you i know? mean it, it's pretty much the crank movies in first person yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. So yeah, if you like crank high voltage and stuff, th- th- this is what you'll love. But uh, it didn't make that much money. It only made like seven thousand out of its ten thousand. I mean, no, wait, seven million out of its ten million budget. <laughs> if it made seven thousand out, shit, which... <laughs> it's not doing like super incredibly well. But I, since it's not that expensive, I mean, people are gonna pass it around and enjoy it for what it is. I mean, it it's, it's it wasn't it, is it even getting any decent amount of advertising? I mean, I saw a ton of it, a ton of advertising on the channels I watch, Adult Swim and Comedy Central. Uh, they're advertising it for particular demos, but I don't think they're going outside that because there's no way like the people who saw The Boss this weekend mm-hmm. were really going to see Hardcore Henry. Because most people I told, Luke, who are normal people were like, ew, you're going to see that? Like they weren't into it at all. So, you know. Yeah. But I mean, I don't think there's going to be that many first person movies. Maybe there'll be some here and there, but I can, I can see like other movies incorp like regular movies incorporating like a first person sequence here and there cuz I noticed there was that in um was it called uh that 
that Sasha Baron Cohen movie that came out recently, uh, Grimsley Brothers. Oh, you saw that? Oh, no, but I heard that there was a scene like oh. that in the film, the, the opening scene. And also the upcoming Ben-Hur remake. What? Yeah, they're remaking the Ben-Hur. Well, Ben-Hur, Ben-Hur's that the 50s one's a remake of a silent movie. Shit. Fuck. Okay, well, they're remaking it again, and... There's a small sequence of a first person sequence in the trailer where the character gets pulled into the water and you see it from their perspective. So I think it's just going to be a, a camera technique that sometimes a director will use. Well, they've used POVs before. Like it's an, they did it in classic Hollywood movies, but the way they were using it in Hardcore Henry is absolutely video game logic. Like yeah. there's certain scenes where I was like, I feel like I'm watching someone bring a video game to life, but. <laughs> Uh, this director, he made music videos like that before uh, for his band. So this is like his whole thing. And I'm kind of wondering if we'll ever see another movie by this guy ever again or if he'll just keep doing this thing over and over again, Maybe. you know? I mean, the movie wasn't that big of a success, but it didn't bomb me that badly. I mean, it'll make it'll make its money back. It's only three million off or so. Well, I think, yeah, they bought it for $10 million, the yeah. distributor. So I think it'll they'll be fine financially. Mm, yeah, but, like, it, it is pretty much a great tribute to video games. Like, you have this, the main character, Henry, he doesn't speak. So he has to, like, mime everything. And also, yeah. you just have, like, essentially, like, cup, Coupley. He's basically, yeah. like, the a tutorial voice or just some, some guy passing out the uh, missions to do. Well, yeah, because he gets calls from him randomly, like, when the plot... I mean, the plot doesn't really lull that often, but every, every he'll, he'll get knocked down and suddenly his phone will ring and it'll be just like in a video game. Yeah. Like, mm. But also, I saw this in D-Box, by the way. Oh, how is that? Wait, did you yeah, do this? it's perfect for the film. Did you do the special Thursday showing thing? What's the special Thursday showing? Oh, there was a Thursday showing where you got a comic book and it was a discounted D-Box thing. No, I didn't get a comic book, no. My my town's too small and crappy for that stuff. Does it, like, vibrate? What's the D-Box well, experience? Well, D-Box in certain theaters is just basically a seat that just shakes back and forth and up and down and stuff. Wow. That's so That's so cheesy. No, it's still cool. I mean, for this movie, it was cool. Like, I saw it for other movies, but they didn't really work. I mean, the only other movie I felt was worthy of the D-Box experience was Jurassic World. And that was about it. Yeah! It was great. I mean, like, I know that a lot of people aren't going to like this movie because, I don't know, it's it's a specific kind of movie. Yeah, it is. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's a super niche. I wouldn't want to see a lot of movies adapt it, you know? And I'm kind of happy it's not a adaption of a first-person shooter that decided to do this. Like, I think that would have been too hokey. Yeah, yeah it would have. But the way they, I think it works is, if it's just this one, I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah I just... But no one's right. If it does well enough, it, there will be at least two more before people are like, yeah, maybe it was just the one time. Let's, uh, let's move on. I mean, Crank got a sequel years later. Like, I, I can imagine this getting either a sequel or, like, some sort of spiritual successor. Well, if it gets a sequel, it didn't do well enough for it to be theatrical. It'll just be a, uh, a on-demand thing because the on-demand action market's huge. So. Mm. I love you, Henry. I'll get you washed. Cash! Let's see. Next question. Oh, stink. Gull Raven. Ooh, question. Are you going to make any newer animations for your reviews at some point? Or are you happy with the ones you still have? Also, are you going to make a video on your webcomic Loki RL? Well, for, well, on that second question, when ep see, episode two is out, I guess I'll do like a read through or an audio commentary of it in video form. But the first question about if I'm ever going to have new pan pizza animations in the video, <laughs> I don't have time for that since, since, you know, all the art stuff that I'm doing is either for my own art or just uh, the actual comic itself. So, you know, those three animations of pan pizza and his three poses, that's enough for now. So essentially pan's a hack. Yeah. You heard it here, folks. Going to hey, hey, that hey. shit. Pan's the same quality as Space Coast to Coast and... Um, <laughs> And Cartoon Planet. Kind of, so. yeah. That's how I sort of see myself as, like, Space Ghost in that mm -hmm. really limited style. 
Oh, well, does that make me Zorak? <laughs> we all want to be Zorak. Do I get to be Moltar? I'm probably I'm probably Moltar. Well, that's I mean, a good point. If I had the time, what I would do is like make a completely new uh, set and of pan pizza and like multiple camera angles and also like basically some angles where it shows like a, a computer screen or something and you see parts of the video review through there you know like it cuts back and forth between the stuff but that's too much so mm. maybe someday all right so next question trek heard question what is your earliest memory um i think my earliest memory would just probably have to be my younger school days mm -hmm. just i just remember bits and pieces from them i remember being in preschool and eating chicken noodle soup, but I didn't actually eat it because it had, like, vegetables in it, and I was like, fuck that. Wow, that sucks. Anything else? Any other questions? I mean, I mean, any other uh, memories? Uh, I remember I was, I was like, I don't know, like, two or three, and I saw these guys fighting, and one of them stabbed the other guy. What? And he said, and he said, don't tell anyone about Geronimo, and then he died, and then the guy said, just forget this. I don't really understand the context, but I'm sure it's, like, important, right? Yeah, I mean, I, this is where you, where I don't understand if Jim is joking or serious at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it could have happened. I mean, sometimes I get calls, and, like, do you know about Geronimo? And I'm like, hello? It's not where, and then I just hang up. They, it happens, like, every seven years. Like, Nobody just, threatens me. Nobody intimidates me. <laughs> I'm calling the police. Nobody knows. <laughs> the trouble I've seen. I think my earliest memory was, I don't know, just sitting on the floor and making airplane noises like an asshole. Amazing. Yeah. And you, Sev? I recently answered this on uh, Me Tomo. Um, I remember the, this, like, red rocking horse that my grandfather made for me. Mm -hmm. But then my, I remember, like, being this really shitty made one. I, I, looking back at it as a as a kid, I loved it. And uh, when I think about the red horse, I think about my grandfather who had a heart attack, but I thought he choked. I thought he died choked on uh, tuna, tuna salad. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. rest in peace. Wow. Why are you guys laughing? I'm not laughing. It was a joke. That was no, a bad it was, joke. It was, it was not a joke. We move what? on. What? Huh? 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 This was the worst thing ever. Move on to the next question, Pan. Damn. This was a bad question. This is a really bad question. Austin Reddy says, question, how do you make your videos? Whatever, uh, I don't know. Next question. I, I think you edit them. Yeah, that's a very vague question. Like, how 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 much detail do you want me to go into this? There's a well, lot of things how, that happen. How did he write that comment? That's what Shit, I want to know. Yeah, explain that to us, huh? How'd you make that comment, you asshole? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> you okay, Next question, Yo Boy Gaming. Do you prefer cartoons with 15 or 30 minute episodes? 30. Yeah. I mean, it depends yeah. on what. Like, if, if the, Power the Powerpuff Girls could have benefited, the new reboot could have benefited if it was 30 minutes because they have too much going on in one episode. And it's, you know, character driven. So, like, if you really wanted the moments to really last and work, you would want to, you know, expand those those moments, you know. Yeah. Uh, having 30 second scenes doesn't really help. Yeah, I mean, it, it at times like this makes me appreciate Steven Universe more because they have way better pacing and they usually just focus on one character. But I guess this reboot is just like, hey, here's all the characters getting their time to shine and you got n no time for anything. It's like Spider-Man 3, which <laughs> going back to Batman v Superman, I just want to apologize to Spider-Man 3 because that movie feels <laughs> so much less complicated after watching Batman v Superman. I don't. Yeah. I think Spider Man Three is still worse, maybe. Yeah, but it's like it feels like such a smaller movie in comparison. Now it's like, wow, we thought this was That's convoluted, true. but now this comes out and shatters all our expectations of terribleness. Wow, it's like we're sorry, Spider Man Three. You're still shit, but you know you're not as shitty as we thought you'd be. You know. <laughs> wow. Oh, but here's the fun question. I guess to end off on. Thomas Schwab, question, what is the worst injury that you guys had? I haven't had any bad injuries, so I'm skipping this one. Oh, oh um, I had, so I was, um, 
I was fighting this guy and uh, oh, we were up. fighting in this room next to this crib. It was crazy. Shut and then, up. <laughs> and then I stabbed him and he said something about Geronimo. And he fuck you. The what the <laughs> fuck are you referencing? <laughs> My er- earlier answer. Yeah. Fuck you, Jim. The earliest memory. I was trying forget, to be all forget, like... Forget Steph's friend. In the comments, type, fuck you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should you should type Nolan farts to too much. That's what you should type. You told me you wouldn't tell anybody about that, you fucking asshole! Oh God. You never told me that. I was, I was making a joke. Oh, okay. God damn it. Everything is... This podcast is awful. I'm, I'm quitting. <laughs> this is it. I'm done. I'm pulling Uh-oh. a Ken. Goodbye, everybody. Don't pull a Ken. <laughs> I, I really hope this podcast is named <laughs> Nolan's Last Podcast. N- Nolan's Last Stand. Nolan's last stand. It should be Nolan's last gas. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> there he goes. Play, play us off with a serenade of farts. This is it. I'm Nolan. Who are you? Hang people? on, hang on. I, I, I had a thing that I can add to, like, my accident. Oh, okay, go on. Okay, okay. Um, so, a long time ago, like, I was in fourth grade or so, and, uh, I don't know, I think my mom was cutting my hair, and when, when she was done, uh, Goof Troop was on TV, so I ran to my bedroom to go watch Goof Troop. The problem was, I started in the bathroom, which is connected to my parents' bedroom, and I tripped on something, and my head landed on the bed frame, and I cracked oh, my God. skull open. So we rushed to the hospital, and and I, they just used something to like patch it up. Not, not through stitches, but just, just some chemical that smelled like uh, brown markers. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Goof Troop did this to me. That explains so much about you now as a person. Goof Troop yeah. fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. Goof Troop fucked up, fucked up a lot of things, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it didn't have Roxanne in it. No, and we and we still don't know who's uh, Goofy's wife. Who's that? Where is she? Well, well she do, she was in the same car as uh, the Tanner's uh, oh. the Tanner girl's mom. <laughs> Damn. They were having an affair together. Yeah, or no, they were having separate affairs, but they were carpool buddies. So <laughs> mm. this is a fucking train wreck. <laughs> yeah. So is this the end of the podcast? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, I'm, my I name is Pan Pizza. Goof Troop fucked me up. Who are you people? This was Jim. This is this this, this is uh this is Gas Boy. <laughs> Sorry. There's Thunderpants. I can't I get Thunderpants, so my best friend is my best friend is in the call right now. It's Rupert Grint. Hey Rupert. Jim. Jim, that's supposed to be you. Because you and Rupert both have ginger hair. That's oh. the joke. Oh hey, I'm Rupert Grint. We have too many people with ginger hair on this podcast. We do? Oh, hair. Stev. That's true. Oh, Stev, no. Stev died his like hair. Ginger hair. Everyone either has gin- brown ginger beard or red hair. It's just like... My hair's purple. I don't yeah, it's Stev died his hair, oh, you fuckers. Shit. Yeah. Follow his social media for more updates on Stev's life. Damn. Ste- Stev Raybro. Hashtag Stev Raybro. Ooh, Shut up, you people. people I'm pen- Hashtag Stev Raybro purple hair. And that's Stev Raybro. Next video is going to be cell damage review or a top 10 worst reboot, whatever gets done. I already first. saw it. It was a good review. Yeah. Yeah. Play us out, Emily and Stephanie. Okay. What a disaster. I blame Jim. That was a good episode. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> In the car, I just can't wait to pick you up on our very first date. Is it cool if I hold your hand? Is it wrong that I think it's late to dance? Do you like my stupid hair? Would you guess that I didn't know what to wear? I'm too scared of what you think. You make me nervous so I really can't eat. Let's Let's go. go. Don't Don't wait. wait. This This night's night's almost almost over. over. Honest. Let's make this night last forever. Forever. And ever. Let's Let's make make this this last last forever. 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 And ever, let's make this last forever. When you smile, I melt inside. I'm not worthy for a minute of your time. I really wish it was only me and you. I'm jealous of everybody in the room. Please don't look at me with those eyes. 
Please don't hint that you're capable of lies. I do the thought of our very first kiss. A target that I'm probably gonna miss. Let's, Let's go. go. Don't, don't wait. wait. This, this night's, night's almost, almost over. over. Honest. Let's make this night last forever. Forever. And ever. Let's, Let's make, make this, this last, last forever. 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 And, and ever. ever. Let's, Let's make, make this, this last forever. forever.